On Saturday, diplomats from the remaining parties to the 2015 nuclear deal known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action agreed to continue the negotiations as well as technical consultations within the next days. At the end of the talks in the Austrian capital, Vienna, Iranian chief nuclear negotiator Abbas Arochi stressed that differences have not been settled yet. He reiterated that some serious disagreements need to be resolved during next negotiations. The senior Iranian diplomat's remarks were in line with what the leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, previously said. The leader had earlier warned against protracted talks aimed at reviving the 2015 nuclear accord. The leader has dismissed the proposals by the US during the negotiations. Iran has made it clear that it will only return to its commitment under the accord once it has verified that all imposed, reimposed and relabeled U.S. sanctions against Tehran are removed. However, U.S. media have cited a source close to America's top nuclear negotiator, Robert Malley in Vienna, as saying that Washington is opposed to the removal of all sanctions imposed on Iran. According to the article by the Foreign Policy magazine, Washington is willing to only remove sanctions outlined in the nuclear deal, but sanctions not inconsistent with the JCPOA will remain in place. That would mean the United States is seeking to divide anti-Iran sanctions into removable, irremovable and negotiable sanctions. However, that could strike a heavy blow against the talks in Vienna to revive the deal, as far as removal of all sanctions is the only way to salvage the negotiations from collapse. I've read several instances in American mainstream media referring to uh, Robert Malley's effort right now as trying to strike what they're referring to as a Goldilocks-style deal to return to the JCPOA. And what is meant by that is uh, a deal that is neither too hot or too cold, um, that strikes some sort of balance or that is just right. The sanctions that the United States has placed on Iran are illegal under international law. It is a fact that they were purposefully uh, muddled and conflated with terrorism to make their lifting more difficult. And so this is just going to be something that the United States government is going to have to work out to bring itself back into, the compl into compliance with the deal that it signed in 2015 and United Nations Resolution 2231. Last week, the European Union sanctioned eight Iranian commanders and three entities over so-called human rights violations. The move was a big shock for Tehran, as it is involved in EU-mediated talks to revive the JCPOA. Iranian chief nuclear negotiator Abbas Arachi lashed out at EU sanctions, saying they have undermined the talks in Vienna. And we told them that even your human rights sanctions that you imposed uh, two days ago, we consider as JCPOA related sanctions because right in the middle of the negotiations, you decided to impose sanctions. Uh, and that is certainly to undermine the current negotiations and to undermine JCPOA altogether. So as far as you are concerned, this is in fact a significant non-performance by uh, European Union uh, to impose uh, new sanctions or new designations as they call it. Also, the Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif slammed the EU for imposing sanctions on Iran instead of condemning America's economic terrorism against 82 million Iranians and the incident at Natanz nuclear facility. This proves that the EU has no place in the world. It proves that not only the EU follows US policies, but it also follows the most extremist groups inside the US and Israel. The top Iranian diplomat called the EU sanctions destructive, saying Iran will respond to this action by imposing bans on European individuals. I think that the most recent round of sanctions applied by the EU to Iran are uh, purely to be uh, used as a bargaining chip in the current talks in Vienna. Uh, the EU has not placed sanctions on Iran since 2013, and so therefore uh, this application of sanctions against members of Iran's military coming now right in the middle of these very uh, tendentious talks uh, within Vienna, albeit so far uh, constructive, is a clear sign that the EU is once again uh, fulfilling its role as uh, a, a, a vassal entity for the United States. 
On Friday, Tehran announced that it has increased its nuclear activities despite the sabotage attack, and its first batch of 60% enriched uranium was ready at Natanz nuclear facility. While the U.S. seems to try to use the sanctions and the acts of sabotage as leveraging the negotiations on the 2015 nuclear deal, Iran has taken back the momentum by making that announcement on Friday. Iran says it will not pay attention to Washington's rhetoric and that the ball is in the U.S. court to revive the deal, if it really wants to do so.